All right, man. Peace to the 12. Uh, this lesson is titled, as you can see by the title, The Truth About Fallen Angels. All right, so a brother Chris sent me a comment, and he said, you should do a video. I'm going to read it off my phone. He said, you should do a video on the giants from the book of Enoch or and the fallen angels and why God flooded the earth. I believe both are talked about in Genesis, but I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> so, I will not be reading from the book of Enoch, but I will do a video on the book of Enoch at a certain time. <laughs> but I will do a video on so-called fallen angels. Now, what is a fallen angel? Well, let's ask Google. <laughs> let's, let's ask Google. What is a fallen angel? A fallen angel. According to Google, it says... In Christian, Jewish, and Muslim tradition, an angel who rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven. All right. The fallen angel Lucifer. So that's what they say. <laughs> now, like the scriptures say, let's let, uh, let's let the most high be true and every man a liar. I should have included that scripture in this video. But nonetheless, I'm going to start this off before I get really in depth on this. By going through a couple of scriptures, a couple of precepts to lay down a foundation for this lesson. We're going to start at Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not onto thine own understanding. All right. Oftentimes when you hear a little something or whatever, your imagination begins to run rampant. You start to think about this and that and oh, this is how I would see it and this is what I would do and yada, yada, yada. Well, trust in trust not in your own heart. Meaning trust not in your own mind and lean not onto your understanding. But rather, what should you trust? You should trust Yahweh Bashim Shai. Alright, it's an order set up. Alright, you trust the most high. Alright. The head of the man is our Lord, our King, Yahweh Shai, and the head of the woman is the man. Alright, and this is who you lean on. You don't trust on your own understanding. You have to follow the chain of command. Now, so don't trust on your own understanding, but rather do what? Get understanding through the precepts. Alright. Psalms 119, 104. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way, right? So through the precepts, you get understanding. Alright. And after you get that understanding, you hate every false way. You hate every false statement, false doctrine that comes out because you know the truth. Why? Because you have studied to show yourself approved by reading the Bible. Alright. So you begin to study, and then you and then you hate the false ways, all right? Then you, then you just destroy every false way, all right? Now this is gonna be my final precept, and then we're gonna get right up right into it. We're gonna get right into it after this precept. Isaiah twenty-eight and ten. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So what that means is what? Sometimes uh, when you go precept upon precept, sometimes you got to go for the book of Isaiah. Then you got to go to the book of Genesis. Then you got to go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Then you might have to go to Revelations. You know, you have to be linking up the precepts that are in various books within the Bible. All right? You can't just get the full understanding by reading one chapter and think you got it all. all right? You got to go precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. You might have to go to a verse in Joshua. Then you have to go through a verse in uh, Exodus or whatever the case may be. You understand? So don't just think you got the full understanding based off of a, a damn, a damn one, one chapter, man, or one verse. All right? So that's the point, man. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest, whereas he may cause the weary to rest. All right, how do we rest? We rest through, once again, the scriptures. That's where we get our understanding. All right, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. All right, some of our people would not hear, just like this video, right? After I do this video, you're going to have some people that still disagree with what I'm saying, even though I'm using the scriptures. Um, but the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. See, some people that read this Bible, man, they 
they they snared and they taken, you know, and they go off in different doctrines. All right, because they didn't study to show themselves approved or they just outright rejected the answer that they received. Now, with all that being said, I'll tell you what a precept is, too. What's a precept? A precept is a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. All right, so the general rule is to always go back on the scriptures, man. Always go back to the scriptures, learn the rules, learn the code, the doctrines. Like they tell people, what well, you got to be on code. Yeah, learn the code, the doctrine, and the guidelines. You have to get that through the scriptures, man. Not on your own understanding. Not off of some motivational speech. Not off of your, not off of Stephen Hawking or whoever the hell else, man. All right, but through the precepts, through this Bible. Now, with all that being said, you got to link up the precepts. So this is the doctrine where it starts from. That's why the brother said he believes in Genesis. Now, this is where the doctrine starts from. All right. Genesis chapter 6. And I'm going to read verse 1 on down. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. All right. <laughs> and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Is they shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. Now, this is where it all starts the fallen angels, the Nephilim, and all that stuff. This is where they start. Because people who read this verse, they read this verse, and they believe, <laughs> they believe that the sons of God. Are the, are the literal angels, you know, and, and, and you can see that because when you read for, uh, when you read uh, Job, the first chapter, uh, it talks about how the angels are called the sons of God and also in Job, the second chapter. So you can see that, how that could be construed as, okay, yeah, the angels, they came and they had sex with women and this and that. And, and you know, and I'm going to do a video on giants at another time. But, um, so in their mind, they believe... And they mind they believe that you know an angel of the Lord, he he saw he saw Samantha she was looking kind of thick, and the angel said, "Man, you know, uh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go talk to her." And then he walked in, and it seems like your ready song was playing. <laughs> but that's not what it's talking about, man. That's not what it's talking about. This is not what it's talking about. All right, I just want to get that out there. All right, and by the way, no, and by the way, no, there's no such thing as fallen angels. And I'm going to prove that through the scriptures. All right, let's get the first one. This is not what was going on, and this is how I'm going to prove it. All right, now, sons of God, right? Now, let's go to Matthew 22 and 30. Now, this is Matthew 22 and 30, the words of Yahweh Shai, who is commonly known as Jesus Christ. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So the angels of God in heaven do not marry, and they don't give in marriage, meaning they don't have sex, man. The angels of God do not have sex with mortal women. So these sons of God is talking about are the children of the Most High. Let's get that through the scriptures. But first, when you see this, that an angel had a union with the, these other nations, and then they had, no, that's fake news. Let's go to Exodus 4 and 22, right? Let's get an example that the sons of God, the sons of God, let me highlight it. Go ahead and highlight it real quick. The sons of God are not just the angels, all right? Let's prove that. Exodus, hold on, I got to cancel the highlighter real quick. Let's prove that. Let's go to Exodus 4 and 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So this is an account of Israel being acknowledged as a son of the Most High, all right, even the firstborn. All right, so Israel is considered the firstborn son of Yahweh Bashim el -Washai. We just read that scripture. Let's get more, though. All right, because someone reading this could construe and say, Well, now, wait a minute. It says Israel. 
But at the time of this was written, Israel was not yet a nation. And they would be correct. They would be correct. But guess what? He was not only the God of Israel, but he was the God of someone else before Israel. Let's get that. Genesis 9 and 26. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So right there it says the Lord was what? The God of Shem. Who is Shem? Well, let's go back in the same chapter. Genesis chapter 6, verse 10. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So Shem, had, so Shem was the chosen son of the three. All right. That's why the Most High was the God of Shem. All right. Once again, Shem is who? He is the son of Noah. Um, now, um, let's go down to another example that the Most High is not just the God of Israel. Right? Let's go to Genesis 24 and 12. Um, and by the way, that's where you get the term Shemitic from. Like they say, anti Semitic or Semitic. Yeah, it comes from Shem, Shemitic. All right, but the term is completely used wrongly. Number one, there are many people that are related to Shem and not just one nation. Shem had many sons. Elam comes from Shem. Edom comes from Shem. Shem. Um, Moabites come from Shem. Ammonites come from Shem. And, of course, the Israelites come from Shem. All right, it's not just one nation. So so any of those nations, if you were, quote, unquote, hateful to them, you would be anti-Shemitic to those all nations. But in, nonetheless... Shem is a chosen son of God at this time. Now let's find another example of who the God, the, the, uh, the God of the Bible is not just the God of Israel. All right, let's get another example. Genesis 24 and 12. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, because yes, Abraham had a servant. And this dude even acknowledges that the Lord God is the God of his master, which was Abraham. All right. The servant's master. I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Let's get Genesis 26 through 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee and multiply the seed, thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. So he is the God of Abraham thy father father all right so he was the god of abraham he was the god of shem now let's get exodus 3 and 15 right it says and god said moreover unto moses thus shalt thou say unto the children of israel the lord god of your fathers the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob hath sent me unto you this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So right there, we know what? That the God is the God of the children of Israel. We got that here. All right. He's also the God of whom? He was the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So the Most High always has chosen men. Those chosen men will be known as, once again, the sons of God. All right. So he was the God of Shem. He was the God of Abraham. He was the God of Isaac. He was the God of Jacob. All right. Now let's get that also. Let's get the sons of God to prove that. Now remember, it says sons of God. And I've already showed you that you don't have to be an angel to be a son of God. Now let's go to Luke 3 and 37. Right? Through 38. It says, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malaleel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So Adam was the son, was a son of God. All right. And through Adam, he had Seth. Now, you know that this is talking about specific chosen men, specific chosen sons. We know it's talking about them because when it gives you this list of people, understand this. It says Adam's son was Seth. Now, Adam had Cain and Abel before Seth, right? But Cain was not listed. It went Adam to Seth to Enos, which means what? Out of these out of these family lines from Adam, he has a chosen son whom he is dealing with. 
All right, so those would be classified as the Son of God. Now, the list is actually longer than these two. You'd have to read Luke 3 and 23 on down. All right, that's how long the lineage goes. All right, so just understand that as well. All right, and that would be the sons of Adam. And why And why is Israel the firstborn son? Because the, the nations, the nations of uh, before Noah, hey, they no longer exist. They were wiped out, man. So the current nations, every nation that is around today comes from Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right. And the firstborn son out of the nations now, out of the table of nations, would be Israel out of the current nations that reside on this earth right now. All right. So out of Adam... That's where you get, once again, all these nations. So, let's get more scriptures proven that you don't have to be an angel to be a son of the Most High. I've already proven that, but we're going to get that. And then we're going to, and after I deal with all these sons of God scriptures, then I'm going to tell you about the angels and did they truly rebel for the Most High God. All right, now let's go. Psalms 82 and 6. All right. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. All right, so the Most High literally said that the Israelites were gods and they were the children of the Most High. Now, the verse after this, he tells you, but you will die like men. All right, but we just heard what? That they're the children of the Most High. All right, gods and the children of the Most High. That's what the Most High said. All right, now understand this too. We have, we have different bodies. All right, we have different bodies. We have 1 Corinthians 15 and 38. Through 41. But God giveth, the, giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So you have different types of flesh, for instance, right? A man cannot uh, appropriate with a beast and have a hybrid, nor can he do that with a fish or a bird. It's impossible. All right. Nor can a bird uh, copulate with a beast or a fish and produce a hybrid. It can't happen. All right. There are different. Uh, all flesh is not the same flesh. Let's get First Corinthians 15 and 40. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Right. What would be a celestial body? That would be an angel. But there are also bodies terrestrial. But. The glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another, which means what? An angel cannot have sex with a person. They have two different bodies, and just like how all these things happen, they could not populate. The same thing is resided, as it can be said about the angels. They cannot have sex with people, man. All right, once again, going back, once again, tells you that the angels do not marry nor give in marriage. All right, that's what Yahweh Shah said. So that's a cut on fallen angels. All right, so you have what? You have the celestial body, which would be an angel. You have, oh, let's get that too, 1 Corinthians 15 to 41. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. All right, so they're not created the same. There's no equality when it comes to, to, to that. All right, you have one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon. All right. Different beauties. Um, celestial body. You have the man and his woman. You have the lion and his lioness. You have the sun and the moon. All right. And on top of that, angels are spirits. All right. Once again, angels do not uh, have have human bodily functions. Angels are spirits. They're something completely ter different. That's why he said what? There's a there's celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. All right. Angels are spirits of fire, to be specific. All right. Bless the Lord. Psalms 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul, o Lord, o Lord, my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment. Who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now check this out. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. So angels are spirits likened unto a flaming fire. All right, those are his ministers, his angels. 
and they are spirits, not flesh. Not flesh. Understand that. All right. Now, yes, an angel could come down in a form. You have the account of that uh, with the account of Samson when the angel went and, and uh, told uh, the mother of Samson, the mother and father of Samson, that they would give birth to Samson. He'd be mighty. You also have the account in Tobit when another angel went. I believe it was who? It was Raguel, wasn't it? Uh, you really can correct me on that. But in Tobit, he had an angel also go be sent that way. But his true form is a spirit. All right, and no angels do not reproduce with humans, man. Now, remember, he said what? He maketh angels his spirits. Now, the thing about the spirit is what? The spirit is always obedient, all right, to the Most High. All right, that's Matthew twenty-six and forty-one. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed, indeed, is willing, but the flesh is weak. So though man. So though man goes with lust, temptations, and all that, d angels do not deal with lust or none of that because angels themselves are spirits, and spirits are willing, right? Who maketh his angels spirits, all right? So angels do not have to deal with lust. Our angels are not saying, now once again, angels are not having R. Kelly in their head going, my mind is telling me no, but my body, my body, is it's not happening, all right? That's not happening, <laughs> Once again, that is fake news. Now, I'm going to keep going, man. And eventually, I'm going to prove to you that the angels are, yes, indeed, obedient to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Let's, matter of fact, let's start it off. Hebrews 2 and 5. All right, angels are God's subjects, and I'm going to prove that. This is Hebrews 2 and 5. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come Whereof we speak. So the angels are made are already put in subjection. Period. What does subjection mean? Let's go. Subjection. Obedience. Submission. Servitude. Bondage. Lordship. Control. So the angels are obedient and they are controlled by the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Bashem. Yahweh Shah. They're not doing their own thing. Alright. And they're damn sure not cat calling heathens. All right. <laughs> uh, let's keep going, though. Uh, more on the sons of God, right? The sons of God can, are, once again, the Israelites. All right, but they don't have to be, or they, they do have to be Israelites. Let me kind of cut that off. But they, but in time past, before Israelites, the, the Most High was still dealing with a chosen man, a chosen son, who would be acknowledged as the son of God. Now, let's go to John 11 and 51. On down to 52 as well. And, he, and this spake he not of himself, but being a high priest, that year he prophesied that Yahawashai should die for that nation. All right. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So he didn't die for one nation. He died for 12. He died for the 12 tribes of Israel. How do we prove that? It says what? The children of God that were scattered abroad. Who were scattered abroad? The Israelites. Let's prove that. Who were scattered abroad? The Israelites. Let's prove that. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. To the 12 tribes, to the 12 tribes, which... Are scattered abroad greeting. So to the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad greeting. So the children of God that were scattered abroad are the twelve tribes. Alright. Pl plain. Let's get another account where we're called the sons of God. And we're going to wake up to our nationality. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place... Where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So the sons of the living God are who? The Israelites. You understand? The Israelites. You have the house of Judah and the house of Israel, which amalgamates and becomes the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. 
Let's keep going. Prove again. Once again, the angels obey the Heavenly Father. They do not rebel. Once again, let's go to the fallen angel doctrine. Let's go to the fallen angel doctrine. Uh, they say angels who rebelled against God and were cast out of heaven. This did not happen. All right. Now, Second Ezra's eight and twenty. Once again, the angels obey. O Lord, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above things in the heaven and in the air, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, but for whom the hosts of angels, the hosts of angels, stand with trembling. So the host of angels, all of them, they stand in trembling at the Most High. What does trembling mean? They shake from fear. That means they fear the Most High. The angels fear the Most High. All right? And what does it mean when you fear the Most High? You do what he says, his commandments. In the same way, when you fear the gunman, right? <laughs> it's just an analogy like say you're getting robbed all right dude pull a shotgun you say hey man come up out that watch meaning give me the watch what do you say all right man don't do nothing crazy take my watch you take the watch you get out and you survive and the angels they fear the most high meaning what they do what he says just like you would do what you you would do what that government said to preserve your life that's an example all right the angels themselves they tremble or the entire host of the angels all right, let's get another scripture. All right, and stop thinking. Stop thinking that all the angels are created to be nice guys, man. Let's get that account. Sirach 39, also known as Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus 39 to 28. All right? All angels stand on business for the Most High with zero hesitation. Verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes, in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So these spirits that are created for vengeance, they do what they're said to appease the wrath of him that made them. So who made them? Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, he even gives you examples. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword. Punishing the wicked to destruction. All these things were created for vengeance. Now check this out. Sirach 39 and 31. Big precept right here. They shall rejoice in his commandment. And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. So these spirits, i.e. these angels, because once again, it says the, there be spirits, right? Well, let's go back. Once again, let's go back. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Let's go back. We know that angels are spirits, so there be spirits. Right? There be angels. And they do not transgress the Lord's word, and they rejoice at his commandments. So they always don't go. They're always ready to fulfill what the Heavenly Father tells them to do. All right? They're not rebelling. They're not saying, oh, well, you know, Lord, I know I ain't supposed to do that, but, you know, it's Taco Tuesday, so... You know, I'm going to have to do it. And that's not happening. Right? And this happens constant. Angels get missions and directives constantly and do what they're told. Let's go to Genesis 28 and 10. Oh, and down. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Now, this, is, this, is a, this account is the account of where you get Jacob's ladder from. All right? And he lighted upon a certain place. And tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place, and put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. So he's about to go to sleep. All right, he was going night, night. All right, now watch what happens. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder. That's where you get the term Jacob's ladder. A ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to the heaven. And behold... The angels of God, the angels of God, ascending and descending on it. So the angels of the Most High God, they're, 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 they're going through this, this ladder, so to speak. That really, it's a portal, and they're ascending and descending. So they're going up back to the third heaven, and they're also going down into earth. All right, it's constant. It's like traffic. It's like rush hour for the angels. 
And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. All right. And he was afraid. I'm going to go down. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So this gate of heaven, which would be a portal, or like, you know, in the movies, they say like Stargate or whatever. It's really a portal. You have angels ascending and descending, doing the work of the Lord, all right? Through portal, through this, through Jacob's ladder, really, right? Let's get another count of angels ascending and descending. John 1 and 51. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So you shall see heaven open, and the angels will be doing what? Once again, like it said here, see, it says what? Ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. All right? So upon the Son of Man, you had them going up and down, angels ascending and descending, doing what the Most High told them to do. As a matter of fact, you want to know someone who works for the Most High? This is what they don't tell you in church. Listen up. This is Job 1 and 6 through 12. Satan's orders. Satan works for the Most High. Every angel created works for the Most High. They did not rebel. All right, they do his commandments. Let's go back. They rejoice in his commandments. They shall not transgress his word, the spirits, which are angels. Right? Let's go to Job 1 and 6. On down. Now there was a day when the sons of God, see, like I told you before, this is why people I can see how people get construed when they read this precept that says the sons of God. They think it's angels, but it's talking about men. But in this context, it's talking about literal angels, by the way. This is talking about literal angels. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So Satan was among the angels that presented themselves before the Lord. All right. Um, roll call, so to speak. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking down in it. All right. What would be going to and, to and fro from the earth? What would that mean? That would mean he was ascending and descending. That's what that means. And wreaking havoc. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and issueth evil. So Satan and the Most High are having a conversation. And the Most High is asking Satan, hey man, have you, have you considered Job? Someone to test. Check this out. Um, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? So he's saying, does he really fear you? Or does he fear you for for, for nothing? Because nothing's really happened to him. You can read more of this account on the, the breakdown I did on Job the first chapter. I just did I did a video on it not too long ago. Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Basically saying you've given him everything so he might just fear you for no reason. You know, maybe he just acknowledges you because of all the things that he has gotten. All right, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Now check this out. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So the Most High just gave him a, a mission, basically. The Most High gave Satan a mission. He said you can do whatever you want to Job, but you can't take his life. And guess what? Satan and then Satan said what? Understood. Alright, and he went to do that directive. We're gonna find out that directive in Job the second chapter, verse one through seven. Alright, Satan's attack. Alright. So this is showing you that both the good angels and the evil angels, so to speak, the bad and the evil the, the good and bad angels, both obey Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Alright. Now we're going to find out what Satan's attack was. Job 2 and 1. Through 7. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So once again, 
they all the angels, all the hosts of heaven came to present themselves before the Most High. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and issueth evil, and, he, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Because Job was proven, all right? He was tested and he was proven. All right, he lost everything, but he still feared and believed in the Most High. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yeah, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So basically he said, yeah, we took what he had, but his body's still all right. So now if we start attacking his body, he'll, he'll fold. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. He was able to give Job these ailments, but he couldn't take his life. So went Satan from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot onto his crown. All right. So Satan still reporting to the Most High. There's no account of him rebelling. Why didn't Satan rebel and say, I know I don't want to do that to Job. I think I'm going to go do this to Charlie. I know it didn't happen, man. All right. Satan said understood. And he went and did that, man. So that's an account right there. The angels work for the most high on both sides. Right? Let's get that in Isaiah 45 and 7. Let's get that in Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the most high is in control of good and evil. He forms the light. He creates the darkness. He makes peace and he creates evil. The Lord does all that, all right? The evil angel such as Satan, hey, he still answers to the Most High. He forms the light, and he forms the darkness, all right? And you're going to find out that the demons, the devils, hey, they still obey the Most High. Let's go to James 2 and 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble so earlier i told you it told you the angels do what and hey, the angels fear the most high well not only do the angels fear the most high the devils do too the devils also tremble the devils also fear the most high the devils would be the evil angels and that also lets you know that it's not just one devil people say the devil this the devil that hey it's not just one devil it says devils also believe and tremble all right and the most high controls evil angels. Let's get that in Psalm 78 and 49. He casts upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. So the most high sent them evil angels to jack them up, man. The most high sent the hit. Evil angels. So the most high controls the good and evil angels. Even uses that word, what? Evil angels. See that? Most I sent them to do that. Let's get an account of a demon going and worshiping Yahweh Shai. Once again, these devils did not rebel. All right? That's a made up doctrine. All right, let's get that. All right? Um, let's get that real quick. I'm going to read this account. Mark 5 and verse 1 on down. And they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. So a man with an evil angel was on him, a man with a demon, so to speak. All right. He was possessed, so to speak. Who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains, because that. He had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So he was out of control, he was breaking out of chains, hey man, you know, he was a loose cannon, loose screw, they couldn't get him out. Alright, now check this out. Once again, this man is possessed by an unclean spirit. Verse 5. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. So that lets you know that the, the concept of emo, the people that cut themselves, and they got a demon on them. 
But when he saw you, how was shy afar off? Check this out. He ran and worshipped him. So this demon, this demon, this devil, sees the only begotten son of the father, Yahawashai. He sees him and he runs over there to worship him. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Yahawashai? The thou son of the most high God. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. All right. So this angel came and he worshiped the most high. or He worshiped Yahweh Shai. All right. And he acknowledged him as the son of the most high God. All right. And he even said what? Torment me not. Meaning what? He was trembling. He was scared. He was trembling. He feared the most high and his son. He was trembling. The devils also believe and tremble. All right. Going back. The host of the angels stand with trembling. So he trembled once again. He was not rebelling. He didn't do none of that. All right. Let's get Ecclesiastes 18 verse 1 through 4. Right. He that liveth forever hath created all things in general. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but he who governeth the world with the palm of his hand. So the Most High governeth the whole world with the palm of his hand. Now check this out. And all things obey his will. So all things, what does that mean, all things? That includes the angels, good and evil, the demons, all right, Satan, Michael, Gabriel, Raguel, Raphael. They all answer to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. All things obey his will. There ain't no damn rebellion, man. For he is the king of all by his power, dividing holy things among them from profane. To whom hath he given power to declare his works? And who shall find out his noble acts? So all things obey the Most High, including angels, man. All right, everything, all things. Right? We 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 wind it down. I just wanted to prove this too, right? Um, princes all all have a king, right? A turned prince is totally dependent on having a king. How could you be a prince? You need a king. Who is that king? The Most High. And I'm going to give you some scriptures, right? Daniel 8 and 25. And through his policy also shall he, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. Who is this prince of princes that he's going to stand up against? Yahweh Shai. But he shall be broken without hand. All right. Now, this is also, I didn't include it, but a lot of people, they go to Revelations and it says there was a war in heaven. Satan has his angels versus Michael and his angels. This is what that's dealing with, the prince of princes. This is not dealing with the actual spiritual demon Satan, but rather this is dealing with the man of sin, his people, and his technology versus the angels. I'll do a breakdown on that at another time. All right, but the prince of princes. All right, meaning what? The prince of angels, the prince of the sons of God. Yahweh Shai. Ephesians 2 and 2. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this word, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What spirit is this? That is none other than the spiritual demon Satan. He is known as the prince of the power of the air. All right, so once again, those two terms are princes. Yahweh Shai is deemed a prince, so is Satan. All right. Now, you could interpret this and say that the Prince of Princes is Michael the Archangel, but uh, once again, I'll do another video on this at another time. And no, Michael and Yahweh are not the same person. Now, um, and the, the name Israel itself means Prince of Power, a.k.a. Prince of God. All right, that's what it means. All right, in the ancient Hebrew, it is known as Yashar Allah. Now, when you hear these so-called Muslims, when they say the word Allah, all right, the word Allah just means God or power. Yashar Allah. 
prince of power, prince of God. So they get Allah from the Hebrew word Yasharala. Allah is just means power or God. And this means prince of God. Yasharala means what? Yasharala means Israel. All right, I'm going to get another account of the Most High sending the Spirit. Let you know that, yes, the demons, they also work for the Most High. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18 on down. Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. What is all the hosts of heaven? The right hand side angels and the left hand side angels. The good angels and the evil angels. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab king of Israel that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? All right, so he's saying, hey, who's going who's gonna to entice this person to seduce and whisper in his ear? All right. All right, who's going to be a spirit of enticing? And one space saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. So they're having a round table talk, and the angels are all giving accounts and, and ways they can get King Ahab out the way. So check this out. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit. A lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. So the Most High gave the okay. He stamped that. He sent that angel to be a lying spirit. All right. And he was successful. That's why he said, You're going to go and you're going to succeed. You're going to prevail. All right. So once again, all the angels, they report to the Most High. The whole host of heaven, they report to the Most High. So this angel went and he became that lion spirit. All right. I'm going to get one more scripture, man. All right. There ain't no way around it. Psalms 103 and verse 20. Blessed be the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure bless the lord all his works in all places of his dominion bless the lord O oh my soul so the angels do the most high god's commandments they do his commandments who his angels who they obey the lord so ain't no way around that man all right hopefully this was an edifying lesson now you know ain't no damn fallen angels man all things obey the most high yeah how about you man shy and ain't no way around it, man. And hopefully y'all understand that. Hopefully this helped show some edification on, on the doctrine of fallen angels. And with that, I say peace to the twelve. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who is commonly known as God. And Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel, who is commonly known as Jesus Christ. I want to say Shalom, which means peace. To you people that are listening and learning. To you brothers that's doing this work in truth and sincerity. And to you elders that's been doing this thing before me, man. Stay strong. We almost out of here. Shalom.